So Giant Line Group's quite unusual in that we've got the, I think the largest um, insurer owned body shop group in the UK. Um, so we obviously a large, well, very large insurer, um, but we also look at this repair side of vehicles as well, um, which means we really need to be up to date on vehicle technology. Um, and one of the key elements of that is making sure we have the right people to do it. So we see from the student it's a really good way to get some exposure to the kind of people that are going into the motor industry to make sure that they're thinking about vehicle repair as well as just the cool technology on the vehicles um, and to get the right kind of people applying for our graduate scheme. So our graduate scheme is quite unusual in that it's very hands-on. So we get our graduates to do lots of placements across our business um, in different kinds of areas. Um, we get them to do stuff that's actually hands-on with cars. Um, we get them to do stuff that's hands-on with technology. We get them to do some stuff that is much more theoretical, like computer-based sort of things. Um, and we're just trying to build the kind of people, we talk about T-shaped people, people that have breadth as well as specific depth in these kind of technical areas. Um, so I think that's, that's probably what makes us unique. Basically, you get a great company on your resume, but you also get to do the actual hands-on engineering kind of stuff that is quite difficult to go into. There's lots of different things that you do, so uh, I, guess, I guess it's um, the great thing is that you're not stuck in one place at one time, so you get to experience lots of different things. The advice I'd give to anybody who's applying to the DLG Technical Graduate Scheme would be just think outside the box. There's new challenges coming up. Um, there's lots of different ways to apply your degree, so think of different ways you can apply your degree, I guess. I think the, um, the highlights of it have been the focus on building skills that aren't necessarily skills that you would build from normal jobs or that you would have built at your time at university. Most people come out of university with strong technical knowledge but don't know how to influence people around them. Um, and it's very easy in theory having a solution to a problem but in practice trying to get people um, to align, align on outcomes um, can be Quite a bit challenging, so uh, yeah, it's been interesting to see that see that that skill develop over the last two years. And um, so we look for that determination um, to learn new skills. We look for that creative mindset around thinking about this new technology, the flexibility to be aware that actually it can change really rapidly um, and it might not even look the same as it did yesterday due to a lot of these new updates like the air updates. Um, yeah, and we look for obviously that sort of engineering kind of now, that ability to pick up new technology. The key advice I would give um, is to think about the career you're going into, not just your next job. Um, so think about the kind of skills you need in the long run and how you can build those um, instead of just focusing on the first job to come out into that at university. Um, a career is, yeah, your career lasts for the next 50 years. It's not just the two or three years potentially you spend in your first role. 